Hey YouTube, this is a second video of my mostly printed CNC series. Purpose of this series is to fill the gap between the videos that show building it and the videos that show using it. So the idea of this is to give you some tips. And I'm not an expert on this at all by any means, but in the two months I've been using it, I've been learning a lot of things and I just want to share that with the community, hopefully save you some time. So what I'm doing today is going over the tools that I've been gathering that I use the most with my machine. The reason I'm doing this is if you're starting out, you may want to consider purchasing some of these or picking them up. This might give you a bit of a shopping list or a wish list. Uh, things that you may not have thought of or things that might be obvious, but uh, hopefully I have a couple things in here that you may not have thought of. First thing is hearing protection and eye protection. I came from a 3D printing background and this was my first CNC and that's kind of the audience I want to target. I didn't expect when you use a CNC, a lot more stuff flies at you. Everything from sawdust to metal, uh, the bits can fly off. Uh, plastic can fly at you if you hit your 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 stops. If you're doing aluminum, then metal's flying everywhere. So, just kind of having having some hearing protection is quite nice, and eye protection, and having multiples is nice uh, for friends, others that are coming over. It's, it's not fun if you put it in your hearing protection, you have a friend there and you start the machine up. I talked a bit about bolt, uh, bolts, uh, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the hold downs and to 3D print these in my last video. This is what it looks like holding the stock. The stock is what they call whatever you're cutting. It could be wood, acrylic, metal. And then uh, this, this nut here holds, presses down on this which is pressing down on this wood. So I have like a, a tighter adjustment here, but you see this is actually quite high sticking out. So what I have, one of the things you'll want to get is different heights of bolts. I didn't think about that initially. So all my bolts were all the same height. So hopefully that gives you something to better prepare. Screwdriver, of course, you're gonna to need to get those screws and bolts down. Also, if you need to do tool changes on the machine, um, you've got screws here and here that you're going to want to adjust. The other adjustments on the machine are these bolts. Uh, you've got bolts like this one here. This is incredibly hard to get a wrench into. So another thing I got is a flat wrench. That's the exact size I need. Having it flat means that I can fit it in there, which is super helpful. Having two means I can make adjustments. This is double-sided tape. This is great for holding stuff down also. It's another way of holding things down besides these. Uh, it works great for thinner, uh, more fl uh, fragile things like balsa, acrylic. I use this for putting, this screwdriver here is a very large, but it's exactly what fits for these, um, basically what, where I mount my, my hold downs, my anchors for my hold downs. Of course, digital caliper. Uh, this is carried over exactly from my 3D printing background. Uh, these are still handy. They're great for measuring the height. They're good for calibration. You can uh, cut a 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter square and then use this to measure it, see how your calibration looks, make sure things are square. Simple uh, vacuum. Um, this is a vacuum attachment I got. It was a kit, had a bunch of smaller things here. It's good for cleaning up inside of letters. If, uh, if you're vacuuming outside of a dust collector. Sometimes I don't use this dust collector and so that's what a lot of this vacuuming cleanup stuff's for. This is a carving wood set. Uh, things got a lot better once I got this. Before this, what I would do is I would take this sander and sand down on top of the wood and try to clean everything out there. But since you're actually, if you're doing engraving or cut, you wanna be able to clean up inside of here. You can use sandpaper, I keep that handy too. Keep some sandpaper here. But these, uh, this carving kit has been really great for getting rid of uh, mistakes or getting stuff out of there, or sometimes even um, sh creating a sharp edge. Toothbrush, similar concept, just cleaning out uh, things, duster. Another nice thing that I didn't expect I'd need, but it works really well for cleaning out stuff. I'm gonna move over to here and try to keep this video short. So, uh, zip ties. I use these and scissors all the time whenever adjusting something or mounting something. So anytime I'm doing wire cleanup, uh, trying to keep things tidy. When I did this quick uh, webcam mount, so I, my webcam, the idea is I can set it here right in front of the, the device when it's running, but then I can move it out of the way. 
but then it, you know I needed the zip tie it on there, so the zip ties worked really well. These are the rest of my holder mounts. I keep some screws in here. Uh, screws are oh, <laughs> screws are the number one way to hold wood down to wood. Uh, as far as a, a CNC, if you're gonna hold your stock down and you screw it down, it will not move. So I always keep a couple there in case I decide to use them. There's again different length screws. And then this is, um, I keep these here because I use them only with my CNC anyway. Whenever I get done with a piece of work, I want to hang a hanger on the back of it. I have those right there so I can immediately finish that. I find that's really clean and useful. I keep this here. This has the rest of the vacuum attachments. Um, this is also a Z-axis. Uh, this is up on Thingiverse. This is a Z-axis to make sure that your Z-axis is perfectly squared off. So keep that, keep all that in a bin. And that keeps everything nice and tidy. When I, when I put it down in the bin, put it on the shelf there, it's all protected. Oh, and a pencil, a pencil and a level are the other two things. Um, I find myself writing on the wood, the settings I use to do a cut. Sometimes I do test cuts where I just cut a bunch of letters and I'll write next to them. So having a pencil handy is nice. And uh, of course a level to make sure that things stay level. If your if your stock is not level, you'll you'll get a bad cut. You'll have a bad day. So you want to make sure. And having a level is a nice way to do that. Okay, and that should do it. I'm, I'm looking through all my tools real quick. Looks like I got everything. Please leave your feedback in the comments. If you hit subscribe, then you'll get the next video, which will be the I believe the next one is going to be the lettering, talking about what I learned about getting sharp lettering going. And I'm going to keep this series going as long as people are interested. The last video did really well. People seem to really like it. And I really appreciate that, guys and gals. It takes a while to do these videos. Uh, this is my fifth take on this one because I recorded the last three vertically and didn't realize it until I uploaded. So it's uh, it's been a lot of work. And I really get excited and, and uh, appreciate the likes, the comments, uh, the subscriptions. And the feedback it's it's means the world to me and one day i will do a video on this enclosure and talk about uh how i put this thing together but i've got a couple more i want to get out there that i think are more important for the uh people like me that are just starting out thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video